best way to understand defragmentation is to actually see it taking place. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be looking at a disk drive with some files on it. Here are the files. We're looking at the disk drive using File Explorer. And this is the view that we're used to seeing. But there's a much different view that we can also take of a drive and the files on that drive. And here it is. This program is taking the same drive and it's showing us where all of the files are positioned on that drive. Here, for example, is a block on the disk drive that's occupied by a part of the file, bare 3. If we go to the block next to it and the block next to it, we'll see that they're also occupied by parts of this same file. In fact, the file runs along these opening blocks of the disk drive until we get to around here, where now the block is actually being used to save a part of the next file, which is called bare 4. So what this program is doing for us is not simply showing us what files are on the drive, it's showing us where they're positioned, starting with block 1 and working through all of the disk until we get to the end. And you'll notice that there is some free space at the end of the disk. It's not entirely full. In fact, here it's telling us exactly that. So, to understand then defragmentation, we're first of all going to look at fragmentation. I'm going to go back to the file view. Here it is. And I'm simply going to delete some of the files on the disk. I'm just choosing them at random. There's no particular method to this. I just want to take five files and delete them. And there they go. And let's look back at this map. There we are. You'll notice now that there are more free blocks and that these free blocks are scattered around the disk because I chose those files at random. OK, next step is to save some new files onto this disk. Here I've chosen four new files and I'm simply going to copy and paste them onto the drive. Here they come and let's now reanalyze the disk. And here it is. We'll notice first of all that a number of our free blocks have now been used for these new files. But there are still some free blocks available at the beginning of the drive, but more importantly, we've now got some red blocks arriving. And let's use the drive map to understand what the program is telling us. The red blocks represent a fragmented file. And let's take a closer look at that. Here is a file called Bloodhound. Hound is just abbreviated to save space. Here are also blocks that belong to the file Bloodhound. And if you look at this space here, you realize that that space is larger than this space here that was available, and so the file has had to be split up. It's had to be fragmented. And this fragmented file is going to cause problems. If files are saved in consecutive blocks, as most of these files are, then for a disk drive to access that file is quite a quick process. However, if a file is fragmented, as this file is, then when the disk drive has to access this file, it will first come to this part of the disk and quickly read these consecutive blocks, but the drive head will then have to move to a new part of the disk before it can continue to read the remaining blocks of the disk. And that moving of the drive head is quite a slow process and will start to slow down the operation of the computer. If we had a whole host of fragmented files on this drive, then every time we asked the drive to provide us with a file, it would have to be moving the drive head backwards and forwards, spending much longer than usual, 
and the drive will appear to be functioning very slowly. And that's one of the reasons why PCs begin to slow down after a period of time. So, now we need a solution. And the solution is simple. We need to defragment this disk. So let's do that. Now the first thing you'll notice is that we have some new colours. And the drive map will tell us that the yellow is for files that are being read and the green is for files that are being written. And what's happening now is that the software is rejigging blocks of files and it's doing it in such a way that it can bring all the blocks for each file together and save them sequentially. Let's just watch it happening. And there it is. All the files now occupy consecutive blocks and none of them are fragmented. Might be wondering why you've never had to defragment a disk drive yourselves. Well, the answer is simple. For some time now, Windows and other operating systems have been defragmenting your files automatically in the background. So defragmentation is still an issue, it's just that there are better, more sophisticated ways of dealing with it nowadays.